On this episode of Living with a Classic, I hopefully answer some questions from subscribers about the AC and my 1977 Jaguar XJ12. I've had a few subscribers ask about the AC system in the car, so I thought that even on a grey miserable day like today, we'd have a look at it. Because these cars are not that pleasant to drive with non-functioning AC. They get really hot and sticky inside even on a day like today, when it's kind of grey and overcast, you really want functioning AC. So let's start by having a look at the controls before we go under the hood. On the left, you have the temperature, which is just a potentiometer that you can set between 65 degrees and 85 degrees Fahrenheit, and there is 75 in the middle. And then you have a fan speed, or maybe basically on off in mode. So it's off, low, auto, and there it cycles through the fan speeds by itself, low, medium, and high. High, it's just high fan speed and defrost, I will cover a bit later. So the system works by basically you put it on auto and if you're cold, you set it to a cold temperature. And if you're warm, you set it to a warmer temperature. On this side, there is a servo that opens and closes vacuum valves and flaps to basically heat and cool the cabin to get this desired temperature. On left-hand drive cars, there is a temperature sender right under here. It's basically a tube that pulls a vacuum from the fans and senses the, in the interior temperature of the car. At the same time, there's a similar sensor that senses the temperature of the air coming into the heater unit. Um, so then the little brains behind it, which are over here, compares the temperature that you set it to to the air coming in, which is basically the outside temperature of the air coming in, and the interior temperature at that moment. And then it basically tells the system to call for heating or cooling, depending on if it's lower or higher than what you've set. It's really clever actually for being a system from the 70s, and it does work extremely well. There are some weird things it can do. For instance, if I set this to 65, let's say I want full AC, but it's at the moment 63 degrees in my car, the system will actually heat the car to 65 before cooling because it just basically, it can't tell that you just want it max cold. It can only tell, okay, you want it 65, but it's not 65 in the car yet, so I'm gonna heat it up. But otherwise, it works really well. I'm gonna go through some things though that can go wrong with it and show you how I've upgraded the system in this car to make it really effective and really, really reliable. Here is an overview of the system or the part of the system that's in the engine bay. I've replaced every single part of this AC system. Maybe that was a little bit over the top, but I just wanted everything to be perfect and for the AC to be working really well in this car. Uh, when I got the car, it had an old style compressor. I'll be showing a picture of that but I decided to go with an upgraded sanding compressor. It takes up a lot less space, so you get more cooling from the fan coming here into the middle of the engine. Uh, it takes less power from the engine. You can hardly notice when it goes on with the engine RPM, maybe 200, not 250, but maybe about 25 RPM down, like a really, really small change. Um, also, I went with, let's see if I can show it up here a new aluminum condenser up here with all new brackets. I went with, of course, a new dryer. Decided to have a presser switch put in. There wasn't one originally, so that's really good. It cuts power to the compressor in case the pressure is not right. Um, it has all the new fittings for the new gas, because uh, this was an R12 system from beginning with. It also has a new expansion valve all the way in there. And also the evaporative coil inside the car was changed as well. So yes, I did have the whole dash out. 
And I'll show you some pictures of that now. Here's the whole dash out. And here's everything going back together. So everyone might not understand how an AC system works. I'm not gonna go into complete detail, but this is just the basic. You turn on your AC and this clutch engages right here. This compressor starts compressing a gas. When a gas gets compressed, it gets smaller, of course, it's being compressed and it gets hotter. So the compressed gas goes through this line here into the receiver dryer and then into the condenser where it gets cooled. Then it goes all the way back here into a um, expansion valve, which is hard to see down here. When a gas expands, it also gets really cold. You know, maybe you've felt compressed air on your hand and how that feels really cool. Well, that's basically how this works. So then it expands in there, it cools down. Then the cold air, which has been used, or not the cold air, but the cold gas that's been used, goes back this way into the compressor again and gets reused. So it's a closed system where a gas gets compressed and then goes into an expansion valve, expands again, and then goes back around. It's basically the exact same principle in your fridge at home, but just in your car. Because of course it's in your car, there are multiple points where it needs to seal with O-rings. And these are common points where of course it can leak. These hoses can fail. It can start leaking up here from a stone chip. So that's why it is a difficult, kind of a difficult system to keep completely tight in a car. But for most part, it works really well. And this system has been really, really great so far. The whole system is made by Fen Air. I'll be showing their website now. And there'll be a link down below where you can order it. It's a custom made system for these V12 engines. They do make custom systems for a lot of other cars. So just check out their website. Now I thought I'd go through some of the common failure points on these cars. And yes, these are pretty much common points for other cars when it comes to in the engine bay, but the thing specific to in the car and the climate control is basically for these old Jags, the XJs and the XJSs. A common failure point here is maybe that your compressor goes bad. Basically you uh, run the system out of gas. There is an oil that's circulating around with that gas. So if the system runs dry, the oil might go out as well. And then this doesn't get lubricated and it seizes up. Uh, that could burn out your clutch here. Uh, your clutch could also go bad. It's just an electromagnet. Something could happen to that. That doesn't work. So if you're getting power out to your compressor, but it's not engaging here, your clutch could be bad. Uh, certain older compressors, the clutches are shimmed. So maybe you need to re-shim that. That could also be a problem. Uh, there could be absolutely no gas in the system. There'll be leaks. So then you can take it to an AC shop. They will pull a vacuum on the system and they can tell you where various leaks are. And now on to the common failures that are specific to this car or specific to Jags of this area that uses the Dillon Air system. The whole thing is controlled by a servo, like I mentioned before. It's on this side underneath all here. And that servo basically open and closes all the valves. It gets its control input from a small little control box down here and they have a tendency to fail. The easiest way to tell if yours is working is basically turn on your ignition, turn your fan to low, there you have it. If you hear that sound, your servo, servo is working. So just wait for it to stop. All right, so now it's at seven degrees here. So let's say if I call for it to get hotter, it will move to open for hot air. like that. And then if I move for colder, it will start moving everything around to cool the car again. So if you can hear that whirring sound, your system is probably, probably working. So that's a good thing to test if you're buying one of these cars. The AC might not work because there's no gas in it, but you can still tell that the electronics work as they should. There's also a hot water valve, which is that gold thing 
up here on the screen. Let's see if I can get the hand down there. That thing. It's controlled by vacuum. So that's also one thing you can tell that maybe your system's not working, that this thing is actually not closing. It's in the open position right now. So when I call for AC, it should close all the way to get max cooling. So if that's not closing, that could also be another reason that your system is not working as it should. Now I'm gonna quickly demonstrate the system in action, uh, show you max cooling and max heating, show you how effective this new compressor is. I won't be able to tell you exactly how effective it is on camera, but I promise it's a very, very cold AC system, even on the hottest, hottest days. Um, I will apologize that I do have a slight exhaust leak. It's gonna get sorted out in a few days. I have all the parts. So if you hear that on camera, yes, I have an exhaust leak and it's getting fixed, but it shouldn't make any difference in showing the AC system. So let's start this up real quickly and I will show you the system. Let's start with cooling. So I'll set it to max cold. And I just heard the compressor click on. Let's go out and have a look. As you can tell, the compressor is spinning over right now. Uh, pretty soon, you should be able to feel that this is cold. This is already really cold. After a drive, this will be all sweaty and all sweaty over here if the system is working well. And over here, you'll be able to tell, it's hard to tell on camera, but you can see the gas and oil going through the dryer. And that's a very, very smooth, quiet compressor. And there we go, that switched off right there. Now the uh, coil is just de-icing itself, or basically stopping before it, it ices up. And then when it reaches a uh, higher temperature again, like right then, it will click back on and start cooling again. And this is so cold that you can, you can barely touch that. It's a very, very good system. In the car here, you have very cold air coming from the center vents, the side vents here. Tiny, tiny bit coming up here and a tiny bit on the floor vents as well. So now, if I set it to max heat, it should turn off the compressor after a while and it should open that hot water valve and this vent will close. You will get more heat from the side vents, the lower vents. And if you set this thing to defrost, you get max heat and max cooling coming out of the top vents. But now I'm getting warm air or the the car is not completely warmed up yet, but slightly warm air coming from there. And the compressor is still running, but that is to, to dehumidify the air in the car. So it is completely normal for the system for the compressor to be running at almost all the time, even when you're going for max heating, but that's just to dry up the air and that's how it's supposed to work. When you park your car, don't be afraid if you see water dropping down the middle of the car. It's completely normal and a sign of a good AC system. It basically is dehumidifying the air going in the car and it has to go somewhere. There are drains at the bottom of the AC unit and they just drain out the bottom of the car. Uh, the first time I saw this, I kind of looked like a massive coolant leak, but now I just know that it's basically the system working very well. That was a quick overview of the AC system in my XJ12 Jag. Uh, please have a look at Fenair's website. There's a link down below. If you have any AC questions at all for your car, modern, classic, if you want to stay completely original, or if you want to upgrade, they have all the solutions for you. And I was really, really happy with this system. I'm definitely going to use them again for future projects and future Jags on this channel. So this won't be the last time you see a Fenair system and I highly, highly recommend them. Anyways, if you liked this video, please hit that like button, share it with your friends, and why not subscribe for weekly content on classic cars. Until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Lumiva Classic. See you soon.